75 million digital television homes compares to almost 60 million broadband internet homes. So to keep things in complete context, the audience reach of digital television is now larger by about 25% than the reach of broadband internet. Now, as mentioned, viewers do different things to, to control their TV experience with the remote control depending on their digital service provider. This next chart shows you how that plays out for folks in the 31 and a half million homes watching satellite television. Marketers doing ITV advertising that's distributed by satellite providers take advantage of things like linear looping long form video, branded interface, and branded interfaces, casual games like trivia and memory, viewer data collection by sweepstakes, couponing, samples, and polling, national commercial availability across the satellite footprint rather than in the market by market, which, which we'll see is the way it works on the cable side, simple one-click navigation, and a robust and growing portal and guide encounter. Ironically, despite the inherent limitation of satellite as a true ITV technology, given the lack of a, uh, a back channel, a true back channel, viewers in these homes are having what they perceive a two-way dialogue with the medium. This next slide gives you some understanding of how the living room TV experience differs for viewers in digital cable homes. Keep in mind that viewers in both satellite and cable homes can access DVR services, either through their provider or TiVo, for example. But a key differentiator for cable providers is the viewer's ability to access video on demand content. Marketers doing evolved TV advertising in cable homes are taking advantage of this, doing things like on demand long form video. Um, they're sponsoring in, in customized ways a full array of on demand programs. They're doing data collection through the remote control on a market to market basis and mobile penetration. And they're doing on screen, there are on screen um, guide encounters that, that television viewers can also interact with. We're also seeing a spate of new offerings from cable players in part due to the efforts of Canoe, which is spurring additional activity right now. Most recently, over the past week or so, the folks at Time Warner announced uh, new couponing opportunities, for example, which previously didn't exist uh, for most of the cable footprint. And Cablevision is a unique player in the ITV game. It is the, the, cable, uh, uh, it is the cable provider that can provide both on-demand video services to their homes as well as the interactive games, sweepstakes, and polling opportunities that satellite homes can all access. So 75 million homes with a range of ways that vary by audience to affect their viewing experience beyond pure program selection, so beyond channel searching, channel surfing and channel changing. But are they using them? Better understanding the substantial increase in activity and momentum we're observing and participating in in the marketplace begins with this next slide. It reflects the impact technology, specifically the shift from linear to digital TV, and particularly over the past five to seven years, uh, is having on TV audience behavior. There is no doubt uh, that a fundamental and permanent shift in TV viewing is occurring. The combined effect of digital video recorders, DVDs, video on demand, and mobile devices, all of which require the use of a button-driven uh, handheld device, have collectively become the means by which consumers control their TV experience. Let's look at a, fresh, a few fresh statistics so we can see it a little more vividly. Consumers are time shifting their viewing in greater and greater numbers. According to Nielsen in 2008 alone, the total number that watched time shifted programming using either their DVR or their VOD rose 37% last year from 54 to 74 million viewers. They now spend an average of seven hours and 11 minutes or so a month versus five and a half just last year, and that's another 33% increase. Comcast VOD subscribers alone watched 4 billion on-demand videos over the past year through March, a 33% increase over last year. And there was also a 50% increase in the number of DVR subscribers between 2008 and 2006. Coincident with the trend toward time-shifted or scheduled viewing is the greater and greater facility the viewers have with manipulating the buttons on their remote control. DVRs, video on demand, DVDs, and ever smarter phones 
um, are all contributing to this enhanced skill, and this is what it's yielding. 72% of viewers now say that they currently use their remote control to search for their favorite program, use the on-screen TV guide, schedule or select DVR recordings, and to view video content on demand. Of those viewers, also overwhelming, overwhelmingly, they express the desire for more opportunities to interact. 72% of those viewers who watch reality TV shows want to interact with those shows. 65% of those who watch sporting events want to have ways to interact with the event. 50% watch, watching drama um, TV shows indicate that they are interested in interacting with those shows. And most importantly for advertisers, 66% <clears throat> of viewers want to interact with commercial advertising. 75% of digital subscribers check their interactive program guide as their first action. And you're going to see when we get to the examples why this is an important opportunity for advertisers. And free content accounts for 70% of all TV VOD viewing. So advertisers knew intuitively for years, since the term convergence was first uttered, that viewers' ability to interact with the television medium rather than sit passively watching it would ultimately be the way to reach consumers empowered to reach back, thereby affecting a two-way TV dialogue. Due to the continuously expanding digital TV footprint, Coupled with the change in actual viewer behavior, lead marketers have actually been building that two-way dialogue and giving target consumers an opportunity to get involved with their brand and product for brand or product for the past several years now. Now the data summarized on prior pages is all derived from third-party research from folks like Lightman Research, Nielsen, Rentrack, Lieberman, and Magna Global. The data on this next page was all pulled from Brightline's proprietary database. Here are the kinds of things we've been seeing firsthand from the trench for the past few years in particular. Again, this data is derived from our work done across providers of all types, cable, satellite, interactive protocol television, telecoms, and across audience types and ad categories. Feeding changed behavior and reaching the next plane of television advertising are two sides of the same coin. When you very deliberately combine the best aspects of digital television across the providers, you get, as one of our clients calls it, TV on steroids. So let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing here. We're finding that the digital TV click-through rate can reach 7%. Now, as you all from the online space know, that's pretty significant given the online industry average for uh, rich media experiences of, of about 0.27%. In addition, viewers' time spent with ITV ads has been as high as uh, 14 minutes, and the average duration of our campaigns is over five times the traditional 30. Once viewers opt in, they'll engage in a growing range of activities. They'll play games, they'll enter sweepstakes, watch branded content, read product information, request samples, and coupons. Up to 45% of interacting viewers will play simple games, and the average viewer playing the game will play it more than once. This kind of performance, along with the new feature rollouts uh, and initiatives like Canoe, combine to explain the momentum and rising growth in ITV advertising as we are seeing in, in an otherwise down market. So let's get, clear, get a clear sense of the, uh, what these ad experiences are like from the viewer's perspective. Specifically crafted to feed the viewer experience and raise the overall uh, enjoyment factor, audiences find ITV advertising an inviting encounter that is easy, convenient, seamless, appealing, relevant, contextually, a uh, contextual fit with their program selection, and matching their you know, remote control behavior, and as, as you may as you, as you can imagine, people sitting in front of a dish and direct TV use their remote control quite differently than someone uh, in a Comcast home. It's not the web on TV. Um, it's not necessarily video or motion heavy or interactive, per se, but it, it has to feel that way to the consumer. It's not cumbersome or clunky, and it's not disruptive or counter to their existing behavior. <clears throat> 